Good God almighty, it's great to see you here for game three for 100 Thieves Academy versus TSM Academy. You ready? I am so I'm ready. ready. You guys ready? They said yes. yes. Uh, despite the Rocky Star from 100 Thieves Academy, they aim to continue a nine game win streak versus the reigning champs. You heard it from Golden Glue in the last interview. Someday is crazy on this team, and we'll see how much he does for the team. But they now have their eyes for a playoff buy. Look on good. The flip side, you got TSA hoping to return to the championship form as they were the former LCS Academy World Champions. Yep, giving Johnson a bit more time. Yeah, experimenting a little bit more, trying to see if they have that X factor in the bottom lane. And we'll see if he busts out some creativity in the bottom lane now with 914. We see the Swim, we see the Morgana and the Pikes, and who knows what else can be run down there as the Pike Misfortune bottom lane didn't seem all that bad. It did not. I want to see it again. Time to turn to the starting roster is now on the Azul side. It's 100 Thieves Academy. That means in the top lane, it is someday. And in the jungle, Saligo in mid, Prismal and bot, stunt at support with coach Kelsey Moe. And opposite them on the red side, it's TSM Academy with Brandini in the top lane, Spika in the jungle, a Blaze Olive in the mid lane. On bot is Johnson with his support treats and their coach, Peter. That's right. He Where'd has Johnson to go. He has to get with treats so he can get a car treats is the cardboard cutout king. You get with treats, yeah. you get the right cardboard cutout, then we'll have a Johnson. It's be perfect. Uh seeing what these two teams have for each other, obviously we'll have to see, like we said, TSM coming off yesterday's loss wasn't too particularly uh something we thought would happen. Yeah. But now they really have to start to start kind of prepping and getting ready for what could be that playoff march they want to make. And if they win here, it would be huge as they would be putting an end to the 100 Thieves win streak, yep. which really started from two and five. All right, they turned the two and five All record to 11 teams. and five. Unbelievable. This might be the greatest turnaround we've seen in the Academy and LCS yep. teams. Absolutely pretty crazy. Where will it be now on the last band for TSM Academy? I think we had C9 did a run like that, right? The rain over coach of the years, coach of the split. And they're just like, C9 came out of nowhere. So hard. That's the first. Yeah, so hard to really pinpoint what a coach does, whether it's morale or a strategy, who knows. But what we do know is that Someday is not going to be getting at that eight truck, one of his best picks here in the Academy now that it got. Oh, it's so hard to say if it got buffed or not. It's just different but the same i like to think it got buffed because the intention of its play is much different now to get into that fight you want to be in and you want to kill your oh opponent, yeah no right? actually you're right it is a buff yeah it is a buff for sure the way you approach that fight is just boom i'm in very riven-esque like we said before you have added damage you're probably yeah. taking out the target you're on if it has not a flash easy silas and azir locked in corky on the other side who knows probably Ooh. <laughs> Weird. So, already showing their solo lanes because it might be the mm -hmm. jungle Silas. I have not looked at Silas in the jungle anymore. Especially we heard Palafox but... saying thinks it's better in lane at the moment. Yeah. Maybe not tested it as much well, as they would expect. That was like. the intention of the patch notes. It specifically right. said we want to get him out of the jungle and into the lanes again. So, mm. it's going to happen. But boy, oh boy, it's going to be a rough, <laughs> rough lane if you're up against someday playing Renekton and Sejuani. Mind you, that mm. is the stun that will not only break shields now, but with Sejuani there, pop, pop, pop. Three autos right away. You get stun from Sejuani's permafrost. Sick, yeah. Then Sejuani ultimate and the knockback. It's just devastating. It's very similar to the power that Irelia and Sejuani have as 2v2 duelists. Oh yeah, the Bash sisters. Poppy getting locked in. We've been seeing a little bit more Poppy. Also her changes make her pretty awesome. Kumo okay. is a big Poppy player and we see that on him. So it could be Poppy heading towards that top lane now. Absolutely, I think you're spot on. It looks like it is gonna be that Silas jungle. I am gonna give the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, that reserve thoughts. might be Poppy support. It is something that Ooh. has been played a long time before, but you only play it against tank supports. It's just terrible against mages for the most part because you can never find the engage as they poke you down. Yeah, might not suck against Pike if they think 100 Thieves Academy is gonna play Pike, but then you're really only looking for one outplay and it's not the biggest one Pike yeah. can pull. See, they still think they're giving TSM Academy the benefit of the doubt that they're playing some flexes by banning the cannon. They are trying to set right, up something saying to you succeed. still have a Brandini play here. 
see if they're right. Morgana gets taken out, so we actually yeah. don't see what would be that more you, like bot lane. I think it's for I think it's Poppy support. You ban Morgana because it's the hardest counter against Poppy support. Yeah. You ban Hit Sivir because once again, hard counter. You just spell shield her ability. So this to me, the bans say Poppy support, but. It Maybe grounds it grounds Renekton. I uh, don't believe it'll ground your package. Package isn't gonna stop by yeah. pretty much anything in the game. And then you ground Sejuani's Arctic Assault. So if you get hit or not ground, but you get blocked, sorry. Um, that's a pretty good play there. Tristana, so there's no jumping around to get away from this team. And what will we have on the side here? An Ezreal to keep safe. Yeah, saving that last pick for the Flexus. So TSM doing a pretty good job with hiding their intentions in the draft so far. And hey, if things get crazy, it might even be a Zier top like we saw from TSM as well, because yeah, they were the ones that brought it out. And LCS, true. it was Broken Blade running that, but to ask a top laner, hey, can you pick up a Zier next week? That's such a tall order. It's a very tall order. You won't be getting any shuffles out of that player, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> no movement with soldiers Shuffling other than my brain looking at how, what he's trying to pull off. We got Zaya is banned out by 100 Thieves Academy. We did see a bit of Varus coming in from Bang, but it's not a poke comp. Doesn't fit this for 100 Thieves. What do they decide to lock in for their final pickup? Tristana, I think, is actually pretty good now. She did get a, a little bit of a buff, too. I usually play her in solo key if I have to fill in. Instead, we're going to have an all-out early game bottom lane, early game bot, early game top, and a scaling wave clear mid. This is a really nice draft out of 100, 100 Thieves. I like the Rakan here. I would have loved to see Braum in that composition, though. That would be Actually, fantastic. I would not. You know what? Really? Braum me with it. has the lowest win rate in the LCS. Eat, of, like, so so here's the thing. Do you play win rate off of vision of comp, though, and what can happen with it? Yeah, so the reason why uh, it is going to be poppy top. Yeah, so the reason why okay. I think is he has a low win rate is not that he's inherently bad. It's that a combination of you're up against a meta that used to be mostly mages, which Braum is not the greatest against. Then you have teams that were running not a lot of auto attackers to synergize with Braum that don't make him as strong as he could be. True. And then you have just poor play. So all three things combined, I think, is what made Braum okay. have such a low win rate. And then you got bad teams picking him up and can adds to it. But six champions were played over 10 games and Braum had the lowest. And three of them, the highest were mages, the three lowest were all the tanks. So it's just a symptom of tank supports at the moment. But Nautilus did get picked up. Interesting. No, it is true. It, it, it begs the question, too, because you look at how cool the Sejuani synergy is. You get that Braum synergy with auto attacks. too much DFD. But no, 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 no. With the Renekton being able to yeah, stack yeah. His, his passive, right? So it's kind of like, hey, yeah, maybe it's cooler than actually kind of employed in yeah, the game so to think about, right? The reason why I think it is cooler in theory than in practice right, because right, all those yeah, champions are melee and you usually want to have ranged champions range block, rocket yeah. so before it used to be the actually deadliest combination with Braum was when you played Lulu mid and then at least jungle because both of them would be able to proc it from a distance really well and if you can just hit the Q and two people suddenly dash in boom, stun boom. Yeah. boy you are going down all right, comps are on the rift. We've spread out in the line of scrimmage with an Infernal Drake going to be our first dragon on the map. Let's see if there's any unorthodox buys here to start. The shot, it seems, from uh, Ezreal. Gets a nice vision ward for himself. Johnson starting off with the eyeballs. I, too, like to start my games with my eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Indeed. The majority of mine as well, <laughs> I would say. In fact, I'm usually fairly lost if I don't begin with eyeballs. They are going to start with three stopwatches, however. Big 10-minute mark plays could be coming up here on the side of TSM. They have a team that does love to dive, so we could see that coming into play. Now, what are the odds that someday gives up a solo first blood again? Uh, on Renekton, that's so hard. Oh, he's done it before. I know he's done it, but you have healing, you have dashes, you basically have everything that a champion could want in a kit. The last time he You're, did it against Lulu, yourself. Revenge is a Kali, and he, gives, he just gave it right up, but then won the lane handedly right after. Of course after. he did. That false sense of security. That's what I call the freak play. Ooh, that's a kill. You, you First feed blood. the crap out of your opponent, and then you get the gold back. This time he's just going for the all-out lane win. Oh, boy. It just... 
It has I love that you asked if he was going to get solo <laughs> killed and no more than 30 seconds later came up with his own. You just know that there's going to be action in this lane. Brandini, get out of there. You're not going to kill him. So not even a level three. He did not have all of his abilities and he out pressure Brandini. So you see here, even in the caster wave, he's taking extra damage, flash under the turret, and now he has flash advantage in lane with gap close. Yeah, and it's the, yeah, it's a very good point. And it's the crazy, not even crazy, it's the standard Renekton mm -hmm. play. Control the wave, very. hit level two as you creep up and suddenly you now have W to all in, which, oh! Brandini just counterpicked himself. Actually, this is the one matchup that Renekton did get majorly buffed because he now breaks shields. He'll yep. break the buckler. Absolutely. The buckler is not going to do too much as Brandini gets the passive up each time. He can still use the farm, so it's not useless, but slice through quite a bit. Very nicely done there. You see how the steadfast presence will work again someday. And now charged up over 50% at Call the Meek will heal nicely if he does get attacked. That was really nice by Brandini. That was a great setup. It's, he's definitely taking into consideration the amount of time someday will do the same thing, set himself yeah. up, and then say, I got you next time. He does not want to fall for the same trick again. Yep. If anything, playing against someday should actually level up a lot of the top laners here in our Academy League, because when else are you going to get this good practice against a top laner of this caliber? The Blaze Olive, very aggressive there, knowing he had the minion and attack advantage. And now he nicely sets up that to either just set it up or push it in. See if he gets to teleport back out of Soligo or he lets him walk back to lane. Now Soligo teleports in, so he'll keep pushing that double wave he has on a Blaze Olive. And Blaze Olive still gets to have that teleport, mm -hmm. so he's not going to be losing out on too much. And interestingly enough, he is running that lethal tempo, so he's not all about that lane-crushing power. In fact, if he were to run Comet, he'd have a much easier time trying to abuse this lane, but he's still finding himself with a nice little bit of a, a CS lead as the minion wave is starting to crash under his power. The solution skin is badass. You like it? Yeah. It's pretty flashy. It is. Purple like, and Oh, yellow. there's the shots. The shield comes out. It's going to be enough, but that's the lane advantage, and 100 Thieves is very happy to have that, especially low mana here for Prismal as he dishes out that last bit of Lucian damage. Look at all the topside pings, pinging the Raptor camp. Yeah, where, I think he's here, I think he's here. But look at the minion wave. This is just not a good timing out of speaker to come up here because someday is very unlikely to be aggressive at this time. You can usually read on these very good mm. players when they're going to be going aggressive just based on the minion wave. It's If it's pushing with them, they'll be aggressive because they have the waves behind them. And yep. if it's not, then they'll just back off. It really is like surfing. It's a big thing in the game to know as well. Can escape quite a few people, but understanding just kind of how it pressures and how the waves move can do a lot for your game. So a few of the things uh, people like our players like someday players like Impact or like solo laners will have little advantages in wave pushes or wave freezes that we don't see during a game that really help them to win it or get a gank set up. And it's really frustrating for a lot of the players because. They might feel like they can individually and mechanically outplay them, but somehow they always have the wave in their favor and yep. have more CS and more experience. And you wonder, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. Well, mechanically, probably not a lot, but what you're doing wrong is in the way that you're pushing and in the way you're deciding whether to freeze, shove, or what creeps the last hit. It's, it's, kind of, it's crazy, man. Coming up in the game when you kind of don't know, now you think back on all those situations as an AD in lane, and you're like, man, that game was so tough because I pushed the wave. Yep. <laughs> right? that, that was the one thing that lost. Like, this pinpointed right here when I shoved the minion wave. Yep. Now you know. So you have to time it with the times of your jungler. It's very nice if you can push a wave when your jungler is on that side because you know you can be very aggressive, force a tower dive. But if you push and your jungler's on the other side or basing, you're just asking to get ganked. Stun in a pretty precarious position, but it looks like he can get out. Love seeing the Silas against the Rakan. We're always seeing that dodge out by him. Damage onto Anda and to Stunt. Get the flash out. Vision in the brush for both. Looks like they will get themselves to safety. A few flashes blown. If Treats had flash, he would have been able to flash on that and actually get that first kill for TSM Academy. But luckily, the aggression from Prisma and Stunt pays off and allows them to walk away. Burn of Blaze Olive's Sharima Shuffle. BF Sword Start for Prismal. Go Essence Reaver. Johnson with the Sheen start here. He wants to be able to trade that damage back with the Lucian in lane. I don't blame him. 
They are getting pushed out quite a bit, but it sets them back slightly if they can't get back to lane to get everything he needs to start charging up. It is pretty interesting to see that Anda had gone for boots over a Ruby Crystal for the jungle build. And that typically slows down his clear, and it's just trying to be all over the map. But now we're going to get a fight. No teleports available. It's going to be a 4v4. Level 6, Vika doesn't have an ult just yet. Looks like they're able to get a kill in onto that Drake, and also stun as they start to make their way out of this one. That Sejuani ult could have a big follow-up, but they will not use it. Top lane fight going down. It's going to be the Renekton Dominus going on. See that damage swirling around him as he's able to get in and just start beating on his opponents. Here's that dragon fight one more time. Really good timing out of trees like that. And let's see if Spika had an opportunity yet. So he steals the ultimate, but doesn't find a way to use it right away. It would have been a really sick move if he actually kept chasing, flashed over the wall, and hunted down Anda, because he had no Arctic Assault and no flash from the previous attempt at the dragon. So a little bit of a missed opportunity out of TSM. But hey, they walk away with one kill, but do give up the first Infernal Drake to 100 Thieves. Something that someday will love getting a little bit of damage for himself, and he can just farm plates right in front of Brandini. Packages up. See if he uses it over it. Do the test. <laughs> Ooh, so actually, someday greeted out on Brandini. Instead of going for the buffer your W and just flash right away, he went for auto wanting to auto attack reset with the W to maximize the damage. Uh, but at the end of the day, it actually doesn't matter because you get the denial out of Brandini. And if they continue to chase for this, this is huge for someday because Brandini is not going to get the CS. And look at what he's doing. He's buying the time, making sure that Brandini is not getting the minion wave. It's getting split off. It's shared between him and the jungler. Oh, push back by Emperor's Divide. He can squeak right through. Gets that grand entrance out. And it should be alive. Nice job, Saligo. Tries to get the flash forward as mids both lose their flash. A teleports back to top lane for some day. This game is on a razor's edge. And TSM Academy does not want to go down without a fight. Really in intent on taking down. No, 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 no. Got him. Stunt goes down. That's a freebie. Ooh, right against the wall. Someday playing this one so patiently. He can heal up pretty hard here, call the meat, gets him back into ninth health range. There you go. And now he has Anda right back to the top. The one, two, three, and thank you very much as the Haymaker is thrown by Someday after looking almost like a kill for Brandini, but he knew exactly what was happening. It's just misery for Brandini in the top lane. And how can you expect Spika to find a way to assist helping him out against Someday of all players, a Renekton who's going to have a favorable matchup <laughs> already with a sick itemization yeah, exactly. and just, just got say. buffed. Oh, a BF sword and a Kindle gem. So you're just taking the damage even more with cooldown and HP to try and push through. 10 minutes, just crest of the clock. Four plates alone were taken up here by uh, Someday. I do not believe Anda cashed in on any of these. So this is a rich lizard coming into the game now. And that is first brick at exactly 10 and a half minutes. Oh, and he's going to have the Spear of Sojin, which is huge. Gross. It's going to help with Sejuani even more. The 2v2 is completely unwinnable from Brandini and Spika now. I don't even know if there's a move for him. Does he go to the bottom? Does he get himself nine plates? One was already taken off by Prism and Stunt. But we can see here towards the bot oh. side what went down for the ultimate. He's actually in the fog, so he says he hasn't crossed into my ward. He's got to be in the channel between Raptors and Midwall. Really great thought there by Johnson. That's that solo queue knowledge, kind of having that intuition where people are in the base. And yeah, the Renekton is going to go to the bottom. And then the reason why you go for this kind of swap is because your lanes are all winning. If you were to try to change the lanes, you're going to put yourself in a position that isn't favorable. You stick to what works for you, and clearly Renekton against Poppy is working, so just have the bottom lane hold it down, and you're going to continue to get advantages in the bottom lane. A 3v3 is breaking out, though. Oh, but Anna's in the brush. You always got to be worried. They're not too worried. They're able to just slough that one off. They take down Stunt right away. We just got Stunt back on the map. So that's not going to be good for the 100 Thieves support. All three kills for TSM Academy are on stun. Oh, that's a good point. So luckily for them, though, all the gold is going over into Johnson. So he's going to be in a really nice position. That's a tough one for Renekton to deal with because the Ezreal will be building the Frozen Fist. He's not going to be able to be bursted down and can kite him out. So Johnson making that TSM practice. And this might be his toughest challenge yet because he's going to be trying to deal with a very fast crocodile. 
Good kill onto Treats. Here comes Illusion. Prismal does have the Essence Treats for finished. There's a lot of core items finished on that side of uh, 100 Thieves with Sojin and that uh, Essence Reaver. As they make their way off of the Rift Herald, that one is going to be picked up by Spica and Grab. He does get that Rift Herald, but now there is an Ocean Dragon that's coming up. The laning phase is over, but if TSM decides to somehow contest this, they're going to miss the window of opportunity to use that Rift Herald. Speaker has about a minute and 10 seconds to use that Herald and try to cash in some plates. Otherwise, it's going to be a waste of time because Nautilus died. I just want to see uh, the shield damage work. <laughs> I want to see Brandini take damage through shield. Renekton's too strong. Just one auto breaks it already. Renekton void damage. That's true. <laughs> Three to three, but a completely different story if you look at the map. 100 Thieves are controlling everything in terms of objectives right now. Oh, Bot lane being taken down. Someday actually has about eight turrets or eight plates to his name. We get that right, vernacular. And now it is going to be another one. This one shared by the team. A little bit of gold in everyone's pocket as they take down the second turret of TSM Academy. All right, nice. TSM does find a way to use that Rift Herald in the top lane, and we'll be catching in some plates. Money. And we go to the Ezreal, so it's really going to be a battle of can Someday carry harder than Johnson? So far, nobody has been able to carry harder than Someday. But yeah. an Ezreal with so much crowd control on the side of TSM just might be the right champion to do that job. I mean, if you're looking for a moment to step up and say, I belong on X team, Johnson's gonna have a window to do so here. A bounty on his head means he's a target, but three and zero means he is that target for TSM to get some good carry potential. That is so true. I would really I really hope we get to see an all-out brawl between these two guys. I do. I love the, as you said, the frozen fist. Uh, as a, a kind of marksman when I play as real. I almost always love that because I feel like people are always going to be yeah. on the marksman in solo queue. So being able to slow your opponent every second feels so good, even if it doesn't win you the game. I love having <laughs> that armor aspect too. It's super Just good. How cool back down, in the armor day, aspects. remember back in the day, uh, Genja innovating with the ninja tabbies on the AD carries in the bottom lane. Just yep. really ruining everybody's day. If you have a physical damage jungler, he's not even going to find a way to gank you. Gross. He hasn't even gotten the boots yet. Doesn't need them. It's all about keeping distance, knowing his positioning is correct to start the fight. Prismal with red buff moving around as they start to deny vision for TSM Academy. One final outer turret stands, and it looks like it's about to fall. A small minion wave is enough. TSM are going to put up a fight, though. They get a good grab onto Stunt, and that's actually going to leave Prismal farther on the front line as Stunt makes himself safe on the backside. Good kill over on the treats as they start turning it around. 100 Thieves just needed a slight moment to assess the fight. Oh, the beef boys of 100 Thieves yeah. are just way too strong. Renekton and Someday, sorry, Renekton and Anda can stand forever in the front lines right now, whereas Spika, he's not a tank, he's a mage. And then Treats, he's a support. He does not have the items or the levels to stand in front and deliver. And so they commit so much to the rest of the team, but by the time that Someday and Anda are here. There's just nothing. It's a 5v2. So actually, it was just a, a complete misread on my part. It's really just five people of 100 Thieves going up against three of TSM. Well, it didn't seem like it, right? 100 Thieves kind of seemingly closes in on these situations. And they're like, wait, where did they all come from? They're only in the wing, waiting for a fight to happen, really behind each other. See, even we have now Stunt heading up to Someday. Just behind him is going to be Anda and the rest of the team covering a top side kind of human wall for that protection. Nice job getting a new line of wards out. Bot lane's going to be taken by solely going to Blaze Olive, it seems here, as they start to spread TSM thin in the 1-3-1. Both have teleports, so it's going to be up to Soligo to make a little bit more of that playmaking now that they have three wards in the red side jungle of TSM. But Baron is not coming up for quite some time, so if anything, it'll be fighting over Vision and fighting over any buffs that might come up. I feel like every time we see Prismal, it's like M. Bison with two guns in his hands. I love the skin. <laughs> I love his dash. He's got that little, those little lines right behind them. Check it out. Flash there. Stunt just misses. Oh, that's a kill on the treats. That stopwatch has been used for its last time to the watchmaker with you. A kill for Saligo. 2-0 and 1 as mid turret's about to go down. There's the Bass Brothers, Someday and Anda. 
able to just stand in front of a few members of TSM and make sure the objective falls. Second tier turrets now in every lane in the eyes of 100 Thieves as they continue their pressure. They are still sub 20 minutes at 17 and a half. They me. used all their vision in the red side though, and usually most teams don't have enough wards to ward both red and right. blue sides, so they're gonna have to base before prepping for this next Ocean Dragon. That's why they base right now. Don't bother with the vision, just reset right away. And while they will lose those two control wars most likely on the blue side, it doesn't matter. They are gonna have the advantage on the dragon right now. And with Brandini coming up here, it looks like TSM doesn't want to give it up either. They no. want to continue to fight. That could be good for TSM. Between 750 gold fluctuating as someday now goes up to 300 that could be picked up by TSM and bounties. Johnson's kind of cashed out already at three and zero, but a Blaze Olive would love some items on that Azir. Brandini would love to get a bit tankier on his Poppy. Prismal with shots on a Johnson to start the fight off as he finds the Ezreal 1v1. 100 Thieves now pushing forward quite strong. Looks like they will get the room they need on TSM. Yeah, here's a 5v5, but there's no way TSM really thought about this one because Renekton shows up and he's already at a two item power spike. No chance they have enough damage to take him down before he eliminates at least two members of their team. So as a result, the dragon goes over to 100 mm -hmm. Thieves and TSM Ooh. just walks away with a little bit of time wasted. Insult to injury, a third Ocean Drake could be coming up here for 100 Thieves, then they'll never leave the map after Ooh. a fight, and they will just be able to continue this tempo. And that's, that's like, gonna be tough. That's a gut shot for Johnson, because a lot of what it he is, was trying to do point. is get some poke early before the fight, and then hopefully the team can commit, but his poke is never gonna stick now, so they're gonna have to be looking for only all-in battles, and that's just not where they wanna be at this stage in the game. So true, that's a good, great point. His work is cut out for him. He kind of logged in and selected hard mode on this one. His teleport's coming back up, but quite uh, down around the map. We have six teleports this game without an unsealed spell book. So shows you how much mobility is priority here within this game. 63 and we're just cresting up onto 20 minutes. It's been quite a while without Baron and quite a bit of action that we've seen so far. We'll see how much 100 Thieves can tempt TSM into more positioning around the map that favors the Thieves. Well, both these teams have the kind of comps that you win a fight and you can rush a Baron. You've got a Zir on one True. side and an Ezreal that will be building a blade, and then you have the Lucian that is pretty good at dealing with Baron when you combine him with the Corky too, so. The next fight is sure to decide the rest of the game, even though 100 Thieves have been winning was a bit of the someday show to start. We knew TSM didn't put too much resource up there. Do not blame them as someday could easily just kind of run Spica and Brandini around. Not necessarily double kill, but he plays very calm and collected. It'd be hard to take that guy down. So what's the next move? How do they actually make it happen? And 100 Thieves isn't giving them any openings. You know, the, the someday show really reminds me of a lot of the bands that are named after the title member such as you know, the Jimi Hendrix experience. It's like, yeah, you know, Jimi Hendrix is great, but you also have a lot of other people being yep. involved in that show, but there's just one guy that's doing so much work. It's Dave Matthews, man, okay? Right. No one else. <laughs> just have to deal with that. These other artists are not amazing. <laughs> but yeah, Someday has been uh, orchestrating quite well throughout this, the rest of the season here. And now into the final week, he is putting on some finishing touches. And there it is, on to a blaze. Olive, he is a cooked up Olive on that one. Treats could go down, Ando with one more aggressive turret shot. They get themselves to safety someday. He's in the fight to stay. Brandini doing a bit of damage, but they can't pin him up against the wall as they are just tanking the Sun Disk on the way out. A nice thing for Blaze Olive to be able to set up base outside of their original base, but doesn't seem to be giving them too much solace here. That's only what they get from the fountain. And it stays alive. Another kill over onto Brandini as they try to pull apart 100 Thieves, but the Thieves are just turning TSM upside down and shaking the money out of their pockets. Ooh, that's so close. Johnson was really just thinking oh, about the ignite no. gets him. He's out. Unfortunate, a relentless fight. It kind of like. TSM didn't want to give it up, but they also want to string out 100 Thieves as long as possible, so the Baron can't be started. So while that was a, why don't you just leave this, it's also fishing 100 Thieves along so they can get back on the side of TSM. You're not going to have the jungler. That's 17 seconds. Good bit of damage going down to the Baron at 40, or four, 
4,000 words. 4,000 HP now down to two shots over the wall. Oh! Through top barrage takes it. Johnson comes up huge. Exactly what he needed to do for TSM. Brandini puts himself on the fire at just the last moment. And Stun is knocked back on the quickness. The play that pauses the game for TSM comes from the newest player of Johnson. Oh, that's exactly what TSM needed. Unable to find the fight, but the steal is huge. He barely had any mana to that one really stings. And take another look. Panda didn't even have smite. Is that what I'm seeing? Oh. Oh, that was that was very risky then. That's absolutely crazy. You're looking right. at basically so, Lux yeah. damage there he, when he procs so, the W. We just, just confirmed he did use smite. There was two. That was first smite. Health. Yeah. Okay. So luckily we've got our angels in the sky to <laughs> help our mistakes. <laughs> So much happening, you just don't know sometimes. And to get in a bit more HP, it might be there, says changes. He's level 11, almost on 3,000, should be able to heal up quite nice. He has the Ocean Drakes anyways, and it looks like they're about to get Ocean Drake number three. Let's see what our third Drake is. If we get an Infernal, it'll be an Infernal, but if we get a new element, that's our last element of the game. I would like more elements. More elements, please. Maybe a fifth element. <laughs> Ooh. Dun dun dun! And then some big booms, big bada booms. We get a lot of a lot of good plays, some big bada booms, and then the, the nexus explosion. I like some big bada beams with that one, please. Oh, there you go. I like that. So here we are, Ocean Drake. The very topped off are the members of 100 Thieves for the rest of this game. You can see even without Warmogs, and it's just ticking up right now uh, on that passive. And Anda's looking for a Blaze Olive again. There are no QSSs, no Mikhails on this team. And the last fight was really won by catching Azir right away, having none of that magic damage because they all walked away with just livers of health. Mm -hmm. So if they can do that once again, they'll be able to hopefully recreate a favorable fight. 1,500 gold and bounties could topple over into the pockets of TSM. That is a tough ask, though, at this point with the lead 100 Thieves is spouting at the moment. We've got our classic Nayram situation here. Nobody willing to play the side lanes because nobody wants to go up again someday. I don't. That's for damn sure. I w I'd like to have him on my team. There you go. Yeah. Everybody getting their hands dirty this time, too. Seven for Anda, five there for Someday. A lot of what he did was on his own to this game. Seven as well for mid. Nine kills for Prismal as he does his work. And again, we look to the other side at Johnson. The only three kills for TSM this game. And definitely making the plays to keep TSM in this game with that last Baron steal. They're putting a little work down on that. Not too much in the Baron power play. Was picked up, but enough for TSM to get some more pressure on the map. You can see how far 100 Thieves ahead already was, or uh, was already ahead, with Someday still pushing against a Baron up team. Yeah, you see just how much TSM respects 100 Thieves here, too. It's yeah. kind of crazy, because they didn't make a push for anything. And with the Ocean Drakes, the poke just doesn't stick, and they need a little bit more items. I think they're going to need some penetration items or some QSSs, because the Sejuani power is just too much. Having the Arctic Assault just land on a Blaze Olive is more than enough to combo with everything else and take out a Blaze Olive from the fight. And he's so needed because Speak Up and Brandini are not going to carry this fight. It really is going to be up to the carries of TSM. There Back it is, in. QSS from Johnson. Now he stays super safe. He doesn't get any more damage. What do you like next? You like, well, I guess he has the the uh, blade, so you go Ludens next because some people go Gunblade instead of Blade. I and then think you switch out your probably for cooldown. go for a little bit more of the physical damage. I think you might just continue the... Just go for a Maw. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Mercurial? Uh, Mercurial, Mercurial, thank you. Yeah. I knew it started with an M. <laughs> I was like, wait, I mean, that's not what he wants. It doesn't seem like the Ezreal player is really... It's like a whatever they feel kind of day. Sometimes they go with the Luden, sometimes they go yeah. with a Bloodthirster, sometimes they go with a GA. Like it really just depends on what they feel like. And it's like, I think that he needs to just, whatever the choice, go more damage. They need it. For sure. I love the Ludens, the kind of AP build when you know you're hitting a lot more members. Like there might be a squishy jungler too and not a Sejuani. Yeah. Then you're doing half HP on these members that are trying to be frontline. 
Johnson backing up. You can see, I think that's a Knight's foul that he's got on himself right now. No, Zeke's Convergence actually nice. a bit more damage. A great hit and a Soli go if they can turn this one around. Stunt's gonna go down right away, and that's big damage going back on to TSM. Can they turn it? No, here's Someday, and Someday is today. As he starts coming in, the Resurrection there could buy enough time for the rest of the team. Arctic Assault over the wall from Andes. They now take down Spika. Someday gets the safety as he slices over the wall, but only the maybe dice back a little bit later. A Blaze Olive trying to cut him up with the soldiers. The cavalry is not enough, and he can't stand long enough in the fight. That's an ace on to TSM Academy. I cannot stress how huge Stunt came in that fight because they caught Saligo, and he dashed in front yep. and tanked the hook from Treat. Such a hero, giving up his life for the carries, and in the end, it was exactly what 100 Thieves needed for that fight. Wow, TSM found the perfect play and then got outplayed out of it. And the Baron pause was only a Baron pause. You see Baron wear off in the fight, go right back to the way it was. Just a beautiful, beautiful dash out of stun. Unable to then commit to Soligo, and they used so much to try to get him low that the rest of the fight was a little bit too difficult. And then the big thing here is that Spika actually ends up mistiming his E. So someday, again, gets away, and the overcommitment because they use so many abilities, then means that the rest of 100 Thieves can walk away and kill the rest of the team. Just tiny little elements of misplays and outplays are what made that fight go in the favor of 100 Thieves. Looking to put the finishing touches on quite soon. Sub 30 minutes here, and that is an Infernal Drake next. So we do not know what the third will ever be. That was only one Bounty actually going over. Mm -hmm. They got that bounty onto Prismal, which is quite nice. And TSM, at least we know that they are very explosive right now. Because that was a super decisive engagement out of, out of Spika, stealing the ult and immediately going for the Corky. Mm. Really don't see somebody go with something that aggressive. What do they decide? Says Ronnie Ultimate stolen. Speak is safe for now as he throws out the abilities to get those cooldowns back up. Right over onto Baron Crumbs. It's gonna be big. Don't hit the board. DSA. You know, last fight we saw down towards blue buff. I thought it was pretty impressive. Nobody hit the blast. Do it again? No. Almost. Almost. So now 100 Thieves looking very strong. It's going to obviously be someday in a lane by himself, but how do they get into the base? It's still quite a tanky team on the side of TSM, but they are being pulled apart quite fast. And now they're getting split pushed to death. Someday is there, and Brandini can be under tower against him. That's not such a big deal, and they will send Blaze all to deal with him instead, who is not going to be able to get though, because he can't get one shot by the Renek. He can always Emperor's divide him away. One minion, not enough. Cleaned up by Johnson nice and quick. There's a nice power, power spike out of a Blaze Olive here with the death cap. So, TSM, if they get the same fight on one of the carries right away, they're in a really good spot. Going to be tough, looking for Spika. Who does he have? No ultimate for him just yet as he's actually waiting for the Silas Hall to come back up. Not yet on full cooldown for level 16. And it is the Someday Show. Buy time for the guy in the top lane so the lizard can go hard. It is either the sum. I, I want to find some sort of name for this fan, but I do like what we landed on on the, the Someday Experience. Ah, uh -huh, the Someday Experience. Or, yes, indeed. Ooh, the big shot from the cannon in the back. There's another turret. Sundisk is out. Good to have a Zero on your team, especially when you get pushed into the base. They click bot lane turret. You saw the ping or bot lane wave. They see the ping there. They say, okay, so you go bring this up. We'll be good on all fronts, and then they won't be able to guard every turret. So the method of the madness takes a little bit longer here for 100 Thieves Academy. 
as they have Baron for a little bit longer. And Soligo is crazy strong now, too. Prismal is still capable of dealing with the squishies, but the poke out of the Corky is going to make a big, big difference, especially when it comes to split pushing like this. The Sheen procs are something that Gross. they're just not going to be able to withstand. And TSM has to pull the trigger right away. They're getting pulled apart by the scenes. But Corky's so good. Has a bit of that mixed damage as well with his passive, but also can do the same thing he does to turrets to people in just a few shots. So destructive. See the base getting torn apart now on the side of TSM. 100 Thieves move in slowly. Then they take another inhibitor for themselves. Initiation on to Anda. Looks like he could go down, but he's going to get a good bit of safety from the team. Stunt once again in and out to get them safety. He goes down. They're going to drop treats on the other side. That's the Nautilus as the double kill comes in for Johnson. The big plays need to come from that AD carry. But he goes down along with Brandini. The base is open for 100 Thieves. TSM got so desperate, but they finally pulled the trigger. Unfortunately, it was on the beefiest boy that 100 Thieves had to offer. The Sejuani survives, and TSM does not live to see another day. Picking up a few more for the books. No, never mind. We're getting pushed out here. Someday is not going to be able to pick this one up. No teleports coming in either. It looks like they have stayed their welcome a little too long. The game is not yet over. I turned around for half a second, and suddenly, TSM survives. Let's see how it happened. Yeah, so they hook the end right away, but he's going to be able to proc his Aftershock very quickly here, right? Actually, yes, uses it right now and does get to walk away. And while the Poppy Ultimate is really nice, there's just too many threats on 100 Thieves. So Liko is untouched, and I guarantee you, at the game, of the, at the end of the game, his damage is what's going to topple the charts. And I really want to see what happened here with Soliga because this looked like the game should have been over from 100 Thieves. I think a Blaze Olive got a few too many soldiers out. Big chase in, Spika with some good damage. Ah, the Zanyas stay for the three soldiers. He had three soldiers up, attack speed, uh, steroid, and that does quite a bit of damage. Yeah, and the Blaze Olive from this point onwards. I mean, if he's untouched, he has crazy DPS. He has a death cap already and a void set that's practically a full build Azir, and the Ezreal is nearing that mark as well. So the gold, kind of irrelevant at this stage. It's really all about the items, and the carries matter more than the tanks, and they're right up there with Soligo, Prismal, and Someday. Now it's wave duty. Get the janitor buckets out and start mopping everything up that comes into the base before the enemy does. Create an even bigger mess. Top wave is just gonna start pummeling in. Bot wave is coming in. Two super minions for each one. And we're gonna see this pressure now on to the Nexus. It's too much to ask for. Packages here, I think 100 Thieves has it. Oh, right across the backside of the base. He says, nothing is yours. It is all ours. 100 Thieves will take it and they will bank it. 100 Thieves take the victory. And now they're on a 10 game win streak. Gross. And I know that we start the games with somebody doing so much, but the rest of the team does so much with the pressure that he yep. applies that they consistently get ahead in every single You have game. to know what to do on top of that pressure or to follow up on his pressure and be up there with him. Because a lot of times we'll see teams put too much with them or not play the split push correctly, but they seem to have that synergy down. And it's been working for the, the LCS team and the Academy team for quite a while now. So someday doing well from minute one, as we were saying, with the whole team getting into the action. 20 minutes in, let's hop back there for the 4-0 in mid lane. Great engage there, catching out of Blaze Olive right away. No QSS, no cleanse out of the Azir. And then someday, zoning off the back line alongside Soligo, uses a really well-timed Zanyas to actually live. Had that Poppy ultimate landed, I guarantee you he would have gone down. And that would have been a nice spree going over to the pockets of TSM Academy. Unfortunately, 400 Thieves here, though, this is actually the play that end up, ended up being the largest stall that we had in the game because yeah. Johnson was able to come up with a Baron steal. Right yeah, that now. was the chase of the Baron. It looked absolutely awesome. You see TSM and 100 Thieves kind of 100 Thieves buying into this bait that allowed TSM to get back to the Baron, but 
You see the control that Hunter Thieves has in these fights. It makes it difficult to win anything after. And they have the Ocean Dragon, too, that allows them to just continue to chase, regen right back up, and then pull back into Baron, go for it right away. So they'll just look at that one as a little blunder. It's like, okay, you missed, yep. Smite. Not a big deal. We would have closed this game out super cleanly had it not been for that. And just six minutes later, 100 Thieves solidify that lead with the ace. This was at 27 minutes, and we see that five for two in the mid lane where it was another shock and awe fight. Yeah, again, huge. Huge play out of stunt, giving his life for the Corky. And once that goes down, it really was a split damage decision out of hundred out of TSM Academy that actually ended up costing them the fight because so many members were able to walk away that imagine if the focus fire would have been a little bit better or that if Corky would have been caught, TSM would have won this fight and got so so much out of this one then. That is a very, very pretty graph for 100 Thieves, actually. It is. A little bit towards the end, we saw it might be uh, that Baron plus base, and then right back into it. It should shoot back up off the chart. Great plays all around, expecting that Azir and the Corky in the mid lane to do quite a bit of damage, as they did, and then the AD's following up on that. But to give us their thoughts on that win, allow me to welcome Prismal to the broadcast via Discord. Great chat with Hello. you again, Prismal. Nice to see you guys again. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, congratulations on the win. Um, pretty oh easy game all throughout. You guys seem to be having an awesome win streak now. What is clicking for the team? I don't know. I feel like everything overall is just kind of coming into place for us. Everyone on our team is putting in a lot of work, and the things that we're doing just seem to end up working really well. Nice. And what's it like for you being in 100 Thieves? I know this is going to be an off-the-wall comment, but we get to interview a lot of these guys here, and... <laughs> You have by far the cleanest and most well-lit house out of all of these teams. Like, this, <laughs> this looks really like something that you you want to live in. Yeah, I mean, the environment is super nice to live in. And, I mean, everyone here at 100 Thieves makes sure that we have the proper equipment and set up for everything to go well and for us to play our best. So I'm pretty happy to be here with 100 Thieves. Awesome. Very cool. You guys have been doing fantastic throughout the season since the changes. Now you're up against some different players as other teams make changes. How do you feel uh, you did, or Johnson did today as he was slotting into TSM and you guys matched up together? I feel like Johnson did his best. He ended up 6-2-2, two two, I think, on Ezreal. The game felt pretty easy for me as far as lane. I don't think he pressured me that hard and it felt like a pretty free win, but I think he did his best and mm -hmm. he did what he could. Come on. Okay, that's the, that's the nicest bit. Heck he yeah. did his best. He did his yeah. best. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So how are you preparing into the match against Golden Guardians? Because you guys are going to be up on stage. That might change things up for you. Is that a dynamic that excites you, makes you a little bit nervous? And going up against three guys that actually were playing into the LCS very recently has to be something a little bit more daunting. They are also on a nine-game win streak, so just one behind you guys. Dun, dun, dun. Well, definitely there's a lot of factors that come into our match versus them. I feel like they're one of our tougher opponents. And also the us playing on stage factor kind of makes the game a little bit more hype. I personally like playing on stage a lot more. I feel like I play a lot better and I'm a lot more focused and there's not that many things distracting me. And also the energy from the crowd and the stage lighting makes it super, makes it more fun, I guess, for me. But I'm excited to see how we'll do against them. I think both teams can win, but you know, we'll do our best as always. <laughs> Awesome. I remember doing that interview with you last time on stage. You guys got the victory, so good luck again, and best uh, congratulations on this victory as well. Thanks, man. See you guys. Bye-bye. Right. See you later. So there is more action of the Academy League coming up right after the break. We will return with game four of the night with Echo Fox versus Counter Logic Gaming. Don't go anywhere. That's what I call the freak play. Ooh, that's where a kill. You, you First blood. the crap out of your opponent. TSM Academy does not want to go down without a fight. Really in, intent on taking down. No, 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 Got him. TSM are going to put up a fight, though. They get a good grab on the stunt, and that's actually going to leave Prismal farther on the front line. The stunt makes himself safe on the backside, putting on some finishing touches. And there it is, on to a blaze. Olive, he is a... Cooked up Olive on that one. Treats could go down. Ando with one more aggressive turret shot. Arctic Assault over the wall from Ando as they now take down Spica. Someday gets the safety as he slices over the wall, but only the maybe dice back a little bit later. Ablaze Olive trying to cut him up with the soldiers.